I often get comments from folks asking about what they call additives or accelerants and a couple other interesting words. And they're usually referring to things like aluminum powder or iron oxide and sodium benzoate and a couple other interesting things. We call those things contaminants. Now, some time ago, we did make some antique muzzle loading propellant using aluminum powder. And this was a couple years ago now. It lit off so bright and hot in open air on the ground, we immediately decided that we were not going to use that in a firearm. Again, I don't remember what the percentage of aluminum powder was, but it definitely changed the burn characteristics of the powder in open air. And I didn't think it would do any better in a rifle, not to mention nobody wanted to draw straws over whose rifle we were going to try it in. So we didn't go any further with that. But I was reading some comments from some folks eh, a couple of weeks ago talking about iron oxide. And uh, if I understand it correct, iron oxide is basically rust. But supposedly, iron oxide is some kind of an accelerator uh, that will help it burn faster, help the py uh, antique muzzle loading propellant burn faster, supposedly. Now, I didn't want to add too much like we did with the aluminum powder back when, so I was looking up some stuff and I asked the guy and he said, between 1% to 2%, no more than 2%. So we went with about 1%. The powder we made is 771310 Osage Orange. 200 gram test batch, like I do with all of my test batches, with 1.75 grams of iron oxide. This stuff was milled for 48 hours. We did not take milled powder and add the iron nit uh, iron nitrate geez iron oxide to it we started with fresh nitrate charcoal and sulfur and milled everything together for 48 hours we then compressed it to a density of 1.75 grams per cubic centimeter like all of our other powders we used it in our kibler southern mountain rifle with 50 grains of 3f a 20 thousandths pillow ticking patch and a 440 diameter round ball and we also tried it through the 44 caliber 1851 Navy. Spare me the lecture on it being the wrong caliber. Trust me, I don't care. With 25 grains and a 454 round ball. So here's how it went. So this is our iron oxide contaminant powder. Yes. So this is Osage Orange milled for 48 hours. It is 3F with 1% iron oxide. So here's shot number one. Eh. Oh, you didn't have the barrel placed. You're too far away from it. Am I? Okay, so shot number two, or is it one? Two, technically... There, yeah, yeah, okay. What do you want? Tell me what you want. That, that looks okay. I don't know what's going on. I, we'll see if it all of a sudden starts magically reading. That would make sense. It's, it's weird that we got two shots down it and none of them have read. That's, that's odd. <laughs> About to get mad at you, Garmin. Yep. I'll give you the same treatment we gave to the other one. <laughs> it's, this is shot number three. It's not horrible. Yeah. yeah. It's not bitching, I don't think, as far as cleanliness goes. I'd like to know how fast it is. It feels reasonably powerful. <sighs> Come on, read, man. What, what, what's, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? You've always read until now. What, what the literal fuck? So I'm gonna, 
try and get this a little closer here and look uh, like a dork fish. There you go. It just analyzed. It, it analyzed it, that shot. It did. Nothing's there. Really? Nothing. Okay, so. Push the button. This is the first time that we've ever experienced any trouble with this chronograph. It's kind of concerning. But Derek seems to think it's because I'm not in the right location. But so you tell me where you want it and put it I'll off to the sun. It. I uh, think, yeah, uh, there you go. Try that. Okay. No, no, you don't. There we go. 14. Okay. Now that's what, <clears throat> shot number four? I think five. it's five. Well, yeah. let me swab it anyway, and then we'll uh, we'll get some more numbers off of it. It doesn't seem to have picked up a bunch of velocity. Well, seeing as how the Osage Orange was right out of the gate, 1850 plus. 1870, something like that? I think like the that. first shot was 1858 or 1856. Yeah. So, if anything, it slowed it down. Maybe 1% is too much. Or not enough. <laughs> It's not nearly as filthy dirty as I was expecting it to be. From I'm kind of surprised. I I need to go It's uh That that like it's like GoX maybe a little bit mm. worse. Maybe a tad. I don't I'd know. say that's on par with GoX. It might subjective maybe shoot you. It's faster than GoX. It it is. It's 150 feet per second faster than GoX, but We'll see what the other numbers read, but yeah. it, I bet you it's going to end up costing us velocity. It's what it's looking like now. That's why we call them contaminants. Who's that old British fuddy dud you always quote? Captain F.M. Smith of the Royal Artillery. Who's quoted... Saying graphite is little more than a, a contaminant. contaminant. And that's what I always anytime somebody goes, Oh, what about graphite? You need to graphite it. No, I don't. <laughs> Captain Smith and I agree. Graphite is little more than a contaminant. All right. Shot number two with the iron oxide powder. Oh, come on now. That felt uh 1777. Yeah, that, that did not improve mm -mm. performance. Mm -mm. That's bad. Now, I remember Tech Ingredients went over making rocket motors and they added iron oxide, but I thought they added it to increase burn time. Oh? Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, but I thought either either way, it uh, doesn't seem to have improved our uh, propellant at we're, all. Well, we're we're talking about the difference between a rocket motor and something that needs to go off as fast as possible, burn as efficiently as possible, yeah. and produce the most gases. Yeah. Rocket motors are rocket motor formulas don't make sense to me because you want something that's going to produce a lot of power, but also burn as long as possible which is the exact opposite of what we want in a barrel. We don't want it to slow our burn rate. Now that's assuming iron oxide does. I can't remember. We, we're yeah, going to have to go back over that. Supposedly from what I've, from what I've heard from folks and what I've read, uh, it, it does help it a little bit, but to what extent, I don't know. We're certainly not seeing that here. Well, and from what I remember, it was like 12% that they were adding to their wow, form really oh yeah they they added a lot of iron oxide that does <clears> seem like a lot this is only one percent yeah that's what i but, mean i mean even still it's like you could see it when i pressed it it was almost pink well not it, it had, had a red hue yeah to it, i guess yeah all right shot number three Eighteen eleven, i think is what that said Warning, internal temperatures getting, getting hot. 
1811, yeah. Did you lose your flint? No, you didn't. No. Well, let me get one more. And uh, we'll try the pistol. I suppose it could change something in a pistol, but... I suppose. I, I kind of doubt it. I had somebody tell me in the comments that the fact that my powder doesn't go any faster, doesn't make any higher velocity than the same charge of Swiss, shows that my powder is not as good. And the only reason why it makes better velocity in a, in a rifle is because it is able to burn longer, which... No, I thought he said that it, that it was the pistol. Didn't he say that about... Didn't he say that about the cap and ball? Well, that's what he was talking about, where it was like, I, I don't know why, but with 3F and that charge, even with the best powder that will outdo Swiss by 150 feet per second almost. In a pistol, it's virtually it, the it, same. It's practically the same, unless you use 4F or a heftier charge. Yeah. And he said something like, well, the reason why is because your powder isn't actually better. And it's like, well, then, but why does it? give you a hundred and something feet per second higher velocity in the in a rifle <laughs> that that I don't, I don't know about that yeah okay shot number four with the iron oxide pretty good. 1825 well it's not horrible that's for sure no and it's not but we're already starting off with a powder that exceeded 1900 yeah, oh yeah, feet we, per second we, went, we have gone backwards yes that 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 did not help that 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 cost us a good 50 feet per second i bet on average probably yeah yeah it's 1807 is what that averaged yeah and what was the other it was 1870 something or uh, 1872 something like that because we had that one 1901 shot in there yeah, yeah that did not that did not help Mm -mm. that didn't that didn't gain you performance it didn't uh no we we uh we lost now maybe maybe with a half a percent maybe it would be better i don't know but i'm uh i'm surprised it's not more dirty i was really expecting it to be really dirty yeah i yeah. mean and it is considerably more dirty than just standard osage orange powder it is. Oh yeah, because the Osage Orange was was fast and clean. Mm -hmm. It was right up there with Swiss cleanliness. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I still think the toilet paper is a little cleaner. Just um, not not by a lot, but a, a little bit. I think the toilet pa yeah the toilet paper is a little cleaner, and I yeah, think that's the, that that looks like Coex to me, man. Yeah, or Schutzen. Uh. Yeah, well, I don't use that stuff. Well, I do, and I know how filthy it is. Yeah, that looks like GoX to me. Or shoots in, like Derek says. Yeah. Not, I mean, it, the fouling's somewhat soft. It's got some big old flakies on there. I've seen I've seen worse. Well, what was it? I'm pretty sure the uh, balsa was the cleanest. Balsa is the absolute, absolute cleanest, cleanest powder. Yeah. And I still I still love balsa. It's great. It, yeah, and what I, what I like doing, too, with balsa is I'll use... You know, 60-40 with Balsa and Osage or something. Because you it really you lose a little bit, itty bit. It's almost not even noticeable, actually. But Balsa is a is a bitchin' bitchin' carbon source. Yeah. The only problem is, is the, the density is so low. You need a lot of volume. It takes a truckload, <laughs> you know. Of, <laughs> to make a pound. Yeah. Which is why I like cutting it with Cottonwood or Osage. Yeah, you know? something a little denser. Okay, well... Let's uh, try. Let's try oh, a I should shoot the paper target, huh? Oh, yeah. Let's shoot the paper target. Yeah. <clears throat> flint sharp enough to give me at least a few more. A few more. There's one. I think I can see daylight through it. Hold on, I have this fancy camera right here that I can zoom with. Oh, I don't think you'll be able to zoom that far. Are you? 
Well, I can zoom, but I still can't see it. But I don't see any holes around the car. Yeah, well, I can't see it either. Here's number three. It sure does crack off nice good. It's it just, seems to be fine. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it it's operational. I mean, it still beats GoX. Oh, yeah. But as far as it offering some... Anything that's 1750 and up, that's good. 1650-ish is generally what I get with GoX through this rifle. Well, I know, that's range. that's what I mean. Anything that's 1750 and, and faster, that's that's good stuff. That's 100 feet per second faster than GoX on average, so... That's what I mean. That's. I'm, I'm agreeing with you in a totally unusual way. <laughs> All right, let's see if I don't blow it on the last one. Uh. Hold, please. <laughs> No flinch. I, I, I do that to demonstrate my anti-flinching technique. <laughs> Boy, this flint and this leather is on its last leg, yeah, man. It's time's coming, huh? Yeah, it's coming, all right. Okay. Oh, that was cool. Huh. You shot down that bush behind it. Well, it hung a little bit, so we'll see how it goes. All right, well, let's go. Let's check it. You see my flint anywhere? If that last one didn't hang on me, I bet I would have had it right on there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, my, I usually my point of aim on a target like this at 40, 50 yards is right underneath it. Yeah. Because I have it set to 100 yards and 50 grains is right in the middle. All right, so we have our iron oxide contaminated powder. This is 25 grains of the 3F with a 454 round ball. We'll see what the velocities are. And then we'll shoot the paper target up there in the sun. Ready, here it goes. Yep. Seven seventy seven point seven. Seven ninety five, seven ninety one, seven seventy, seven fifty two. Eight oh five. Well, that average seven eighty two. That's not bad. Well, no, but it's a good hundred feet per second slower than yep. Osage Orange without iron oxide. Yep, all on its own. Yeah. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Okay, well, let's shoot the paper target. And then we'll extract our nitrate back out of that junk powder. <laughs> All right, so we're going to try the paper target, see how it does, even though this is more of a reflection on my shooting, I reckon. Uh, unless it's really bad, then it's the powder's fault. Makes so we're at 15 yards. We'll see how we do. Oh, uh, did you lose a cap or did you forget to cap one? Mm. I might have forgot to cap one. Find out in a minute, I guess. All right. Right over the top. You 
She's still high. Bring her down. I see it. Boy, that one shoots so much better. <laughs> Compared to that new you birdie. <laughs> that's okay. We'll get it all tuned up. It'll work, bitchin'. Uh, so I'm holding right here, and that's where I'm hitting. That one there, I brought it down some because Derek wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. Whatever it is, it's not my fault. That much I know. <laughs> so, yeah, right there. If I wanted to aim about right there, I'd have them all in there, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. That was fun. There's a little alarming having our chronograph not wanting to read there for a few shots, but once I got the barrel pointed, in, well, not pointed, but once I got the barrel in the right location, it says it wants it uh, no more than 15 inches away and then no more than five inches to the side or whatever. As soon as we did that, it worked fine. So this stuff averaged 1807 with a max spread of 47.9 for a standard deviation of 18, delivering 928 foot-pounds of energy, which is pretty damn good. It certainly is faster than Swiss, way faster than GoX. But speaking of GoX, the fouling is pretty bad. Not terrible. I could still load four shots and get it down okay. To me, it looked a lot like GoX. Derek said it looked closer to Schutzen. Derek has a lot more experience using Schutzen. That's what he's used for the last few years because it's been more available uh, up until recently. So, not so bad. But if you remember when we did the Osage Orange without the contaminant, and it's in here someplace. That stuff averaged 1872 with a max spread of 54. So that cost us around 70 feet per second. That's not an improvement. It's certainly not cleaner. In fact, it's much, much more dirty than the standard Osage Orange. As far as the consistency in the spread, eh, still pretty good. The accuracy was good. I could hit that card at 40 yards well i had one off the target because it hung on me in that last just a little bit but that happens sometimes as for the 51 navy that averaged 782 with a max spread of 52 which for a cap and ball revolver is a pretty good spread but again if you go back to the osage orange in the 1851 navy which i have around here someplace that averaged 897 with a max spread of 71. So not the performance enhancing contaminant that we were hoping it would be. I suppose you could make the argument that uh, 1%, roughly, is way too much. You need more like 0.1% or something. And that may be the case. I really don't know. But... This is why we call these kind of things contaminants. I know my regulars have heard me go on about how you need to stop using lead in your for your media because you're getting lead in your powder and then you're getting dirty powder and so on and so forth. Again, that's a contaminant. Generally speaking, I haven't found that contaminants seem to help and this kind of seems to show that. Again, go ahead and let me know what you guys think as far as the uh, percentage of iron oxide. I'd be interested to hear that. I suppose if I overdid it with 1%, I could try it with considerably less to see if it got any better. It wasn't so horrible that I wouldn't be willing to not try it again, I suppose. So as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button. Consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, go make your own damn video.